As the coronavirus pandemic spread across the country and the laboratory was thrust into the spotlight, pathologists and medical laboratory professionals became the go-to resource for stopping the spread of the virus. The responsibility of educating the public as well as professional colleagues fell on the laboratory. In this episode of The Scientists Who Save the World, The Fight Against COVID-19, ASCP CEO Dr. Blair Holiday speaks with laboratory leaders about the newfound understanding of the laboratory's role in healthcare. The laboratory came to the front uh, of, the, of the pandemic and had to be first and, and most important in terms of reliability and testing. In terms of your relationship with your clinical colleagues, what do you believe was maybe message learned by them or were there was there a shift in your relationship at all? Absolutely, there was a major shift in how I believe Quest is viewed. Two things happened here. One is we happened to be sitting on one of the most important topics that anyone was interested in, let alone the healthcare system. Uh, my, my grandmother, my, my sister, <laughs> everyone is interested in this and we are in the middle of it. So we had a lot to do to help educate people and there was a lot of appreciation of that. But then also I think people now see us in a different way because we are connected to everyone and we were able to provide services to all of those stakeholders because we're embedded and we have the existing connections and relationships. Do you believe the role of the laboratory now that it's been elevated in front of the public eye, that there's an opportunity for us to be better custodians of the messaging as well, including with our government officials? You can't treat what you can't diagnose. Right. And uh, clearly one of the strengths of laboratory medicine is it provides objective data that clinicians can act upon. And uh, I think that uh, the response of American laboratories in terms of independently developing tests for the SARS-CoV-2 virus right. uh, to understanding the coagulation disorders that are now occurring potentially as a complication of vaccination underscore the value of laboratory testing. And uh, I think it's incumbent upon the profession to continue to take a leadership role in uh, providing information on how the facts provided by objective laboratory tests do uh, lead treatment feels like you have the ability, almost a fiduciary obligation, to be a public health official, to help educate the rest of the country and the world in order to come across as being proactive to mitigate these in the, in the future going forward. And I think now we have to step out beyond the boundaries of our laboratory and be public servants. Personally, I've been more of an educator over the last year than I have probably in all the rest of my career combined and and educating everybody from just the public and TV or radio right. to, to advocating to public officials but if you look back before how often did somebody want to talk to a virologist right I mean there, there is a limited amount of, of, of interest in that before there's a pandemic but now the virologists are sort of the rock stars of, of this pandemic. What do you think we, as custodians of empirical data, what do you think we have done to help enlighten the role of patient care to patients who just thought we were a black box? We had to educate our, our, not only just the clinicians, but also our executive team here at the Cleveland Clinic. Yeah. And so there was a lot of communication going upwards, and in fact, um, I think that we accelerated our development as a lab mm -hmm. with our C-suite over the last year mm -hmm. um, really um, kind of went into ground that was untrodden. In fact, at one point I had to ask for almost $35 million to expand our COVID testing. Our executive team, including our CEO, Dr. Mahalovich, have been really supportive of lab because we've presented them with science. Mm -hmm. It's a time to listen to scientists and doctors who their only our only skin in the game is to help our patients and mm -hmm. our only job is to protect the health of the patients that we serve if you're the custodian of that patient's health and you fail 
then you fall on the sword. It's your responsibility. Politicians have to listen to all these inputs and decide what's best. Mm -hmm. But it seems um, to me, when people have used science as their ground truth to um, tell them how to, how to do things and what to do, listening to science has been way more successful than those who said, I'm going to listen more to people who are talking about the economy or politics mm -hmm. and letting that be the deciding factor. And so I think we did learn, in fact, that science is a very good thing to listen to during a pandemic or during an emergency and to rule on basic principles that are governed by science. What would you take and pay forward so that you can help our elected officials or maybe our policymakers understand a rapid fire way to mitigate downstream potential resourcing smart, well-trained people uh, uh, appropriately, and actually keeping a reserve of well-resourced, smart-trained people. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a business, and I think it shows, where if you run it on a shoestring uh, and you eliminate all of your contingency plans and your safety valves and things like that, where you say, what is the minimum we could do laboratory testing with? How can we produce widgets at the lowest marginal cost and, and just, just do that, the bare bones of laboratory testing, then you don't have the time when the you know, proverbial stuff hits the fan mm -hmm. uh, to then go big in something like that. And a lot of laboratory testing in this country was treated as, has, and has been, and probably continues to be, treated as widget manufacturing. Commodity. Yeah, and a commodity at the cheapest possible thing. But the, what happens when you treat it as a, as a physical commodity is that the human side of it disappears. And so, you know, the lesson I would say is, and the lesson I hope you know, to prepare our, our faculty and staff and, and the system for, God forbid, COVID-74 or whatever, right. is to keep a robust training program here to educate the next generation of folks to do exactly what it is that I've been doing. Is there a message you have for, let's say, I am um, Joe Smith, I'm sitting in Capitol Hill, I'm a senator, um, I don't quite understand what a laboratory does, but I need you to convince me that uh, we need to be better prepared for it. Right. What, what, what do you think the laboratory's role might be for that? Well, well, first off, communication. Mm -hmm. We need to be part of the communication. If we're not part of it, and we need, like I say, we need to stick our foot in the door and say, hey, we need to be part of this discussion. Right. Um, second role that I, I think is you need to be advocates for um, research. Right. Laboratories, you know, tend to, they need, to make money, I understand that. That's part of what we we do to operate. We got to make money to operate, but having the opportunity to work with researchers, uh, doing laboratory developed tests, uh, creating those types of opportunities, because the funding sometimes may not come directly to you, but it may be through a research organization that's doing something. Mm -hmm. That says, I want, I want, I need access to clinical samples to be able to develop this new product. Well, you need a laboratory to help you out. Mm -hmm. They finally know that laboratories are important. Or right. Lab testing is important. Right. A lot of things they don't know about lab testing, but I think that's us to educate.